Hello, and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Thursday in the octave of Easter. The opening hymn is number 575, Call Me Faithful, Raise the Strain, number 575. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good afternoon. Happy Easter. Jesus is risen from the dead, and he greets his skeptical, terrified, and suspicious disciples with a shalom. Peace be with you. This Easter shalom is the highest shalom. This Easter shalom is the fullness of life being offered to us by God. And oftentimes we, like them, are suspicious or skeptical or just afraid. But we want to take hold of that resurrected life. And so therefore, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people. You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us as if we made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus whom heaven must res receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you uh, from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days, you are the children of the prophets and the, of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, in your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first, God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. 
The word of the Lord. than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O oh Lord our God, how wonderful the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. 
that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hand and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name, to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. What an extraordinary series of readings. You know, when you think about from his very early days, from his birth even, nothing but obstacles. Herod is trying to kill even a baby. And then the religious leaders are always giving him a hard time. But perhaps what was most difficult for Jesus was the continued incomprehension of his own disciples. He's there telling them about the kingdom of God. They see miracle after miracle after miracle. They see the signs, and yet they have their own idea of Jesus. And they held fast to that idea to the very end. And then when they saw him being tortured and crucified, they all ran away. Even though they had seen all of those miracles, heard teachings that they had never heard before, experienced the truth of God, but yet their idea of the Messiah didn't budge. Finally, Jesus is raised from the dead. Mary Magdalene doesn't recognize him. The disciples on their way to Emmaus don't recognize him. He appears in front of them even today, and they're terrified, and they think it's a ghost. They continue to not understand. Then Jesus says, but just just touch and see for yourself. And then it says he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. They knew the scriptures. They went to synagogue all the time. They were with him for three years. You don't think that they knew the scriptures? but they didn't really understand. How many of us have been reading the Bible or watching movies about spiritual things and still don't really understand? We know that God loves us and that God is here for us, but is that really all that it's about? Is God really here just to shore up our ideas of who we are? Didn't Jesus say to Nicodemus, you must be born again? Did he say to Nicodemus, you know, it would be a really cool idea if you were born again. Or, you know, wouldn't it be great if maybe someday when you get around to it, you know, we don't have too many things to do, that you might get around to this rebirth thing. He said, unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. You'll see something, but you won't see the kingdom of God. You might see a beautiful church. You might go to a beautiful mass, and the music may be beautiful. You know, the outfits may be fantastic. You may see all of that. You may even feel encouraged and and feel, oh, you know, God is on my side, and God is here for me, and the saints are there to help me. Yeah. 
but you may not see the kingdom of God. Don't you see that this is our obstacle? We have our, our idea of what it's supposed to be. And we want God to shore it up or maybe, you know, sprinkle a little, you know, divine dust on it, you know, and make it a little bit better, snazzy, you know. But perhaps it's quite a bit different than that. They held out until the end, you know, and then Pentecost came and something happened. Complete change. Peter got up and just preaching his little heart out, right? And he's like, yeah, I mean, you know, where did it come from? And then Peter and John are in the, in, on their way to the temple to pray, and there's this man laying there, crippled. They say, I know it's not politically correct. Let's just say unable to walk, all right, from his birth. And, they, and he's asking for money. And basically, they say, we ain't got no money. We ain't got no money. Oh, well, then moving right along. Right? <laughs> no, but he said, but what we do have in the name of Jesus, and what does the scripture tell us? That he took him by the hand and did what? He raised him up. Peter, who denied him three times. Peter, who cursed out a little girl because she said, weren't you with him? Oh, no, I don't know that man. You know, this guy who abandoned Jesus in his most need, needy hour. Him and James and John fell asleep when Jesus was praying in Gethsemane. These guys are no good. I mean, come on, worthless. But something happened at Pentecost. And he took that man by the hand and resurrected him to new life. A completely different life. You know, I love that song, Resucito. It's a great song. But in some ways it's misleading because Jesus is not resuscitated. He is resurrected from the dead, a new body that will never die. And he didn't just do it to say, hey, look at my resurrected body. He said, this is a foretaste of your resurrected body. This is a foretaste of the feast to come. This is what you're supposed to be aiming for, not a reconstituted old body, not a re you know, habilitated body, not a refabricated, not a dusted off, not a few accoutrements added to it. He said, this is what the kingdom of God is all about. So I ask you, do you have the courage to let go of your old life and the person that you believed you were to receive a white stone from Jesus with your true name on it? Are you ready to take up your true identity and live your life as envisioned by God? An overcoming life, a life centered in God. Are we willing to give up our old way of looking at Jesus, that God is there to help us? You know, the Father's a little scary, so... We'll call on Jesus. Uh-oh, Jesus is getting a little scary. We'll call on Mary. Uh-oh, Mary is a little too demanding. You know, and it's, but are we willing to let go of these outdated, in some ways, misguided ideas about God and the saints and realize that the saints are examples of what we not only could be, but the saints are examples of what we should be but that takes a lot of courage to let go and let God. Are you willing to go from being a miracle receiver to a miracle doer? A miracle doer. Peter never did any miracles before. Took that man by the hand and in the name of Jesus raised him up. Not just Peter, but you too. This new life is available for you and for me if we have the courage to let go and let God. He is risen. He is risen indeed.
Let us stand to pray. Knowing that his words lead to eternal life, we turn to our Father in prayer. For the church, may God continue to help us grow in holiness as we nurture a culture of healing and life. Let us pray to the Lord. For the world, may the peace of Jesus heal our brokenness and restore justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are ill and struggling with their pain, may God's grace bring them comfort and relief. Let us pray to the Lord. For this assembly, both present and virtual, may we grow in faith, grow in hope, and grow in love, transformed by grace to a life of gospel fidelity, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the light of faith, especially Miguel and Innocencia Rodriguez, for whom this Mass is offered, may they soon be, in, be with Jesus in paradise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of hosts, hear the prayers we offer today and graciously answer them according to your holy and loving will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to God unite and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic in apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask you through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water in the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For well, this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in a sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lord God is giving us a new life in Christ, that we, more, that we more readily accept it and live it. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 940, Keep in Mind, number 940. Christ has died 
let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And have a most blessed day. Sing. Number five, seven, eight.